Hey, it's Joey B. I'm really enjoying my fall playing with this new little model airplane that I bought right out here in this box. And I've noticed some interesting things that I want to talk about with it. So the plane itself is a three channel plane, which means we can control three different things on it. And that in this case is the propeller. Uh, we can also control the rudder and the uh, elevators at the back. Um, now, there's also a small set of gyroscopes inside here that help keep it stabilized in flight. So if there's any disturbances, you know, this thing is, it weighs nothing. If there are any disturbances, it will automatically try to kick itself back into alignment so that it doesn't um, go off course. And it's just a lot easier to fly for a beginner like myself. But here is the thing. I had to mess with this plane a little bit to get it to work. So these gyroscopes were not rigidly mounted into the plane when I got it. Um, and that proved to be a problem because all of the control, I mean, again, this is a very cheap plane. So all of the control stuff is mounted inside the main fuselage, kind of right where the middle window is right here. Um, and that's a problem because all of these servos are also mounted on this one board. And so the rods, it's quite hard to see here. So the rod that actually connects to the rudder here, you can see a little bend in there. If the mount point for that servo isn't rigid, if it isn't locked in, the rod will bend. And that was giving me issues. So I hot glued, <laughs> classic, I hot glued the PCB down into the plane. And that has actually caused some uh, like cascading issues in the plane. Anyway, here's how these gyros work. We're sampling them. I mean, I have no idea how the flight software works, but uh, we're sampling them probably at 400, 800, 200 Hertz, something like that, pretty high. And I think there's a vibration happening on the plane. There's a natural oscillation within this aircraft body. The other thing to uh, note is that the dynamics of the body vibration have changed because I lost the front wheels, rip in peace. So the dynamics of the body have changed, which means it vibrates at a different natural frequency. And I think that natural frequency is linking up with the sample rate of those gyroscopes which basically produces an, the interesting effect and suboptimal effect of basically uh, having the stabilization feature on the plane anti-aid us instead of aid us in flying. There's someone looking at me real weird over here. Just keep driving. Okay, I'm gonna start the plane now. Let me grab a battery here. What basically is going on, I'll explain this a couple of times more than likely, What's going on is these gyros are sampling at some, um, maybe not a fraction or maybe the exact rate that the plane is vibrating at. And that gives us a constant rate on the plane. So let me just let it sit on the ground for a little bit. It's gonna calibrate, grab the controller and we'll start things up. So let's just take a look at what's going on uh, on the ground and see if we can replicate this effect without actually flying the plane and then we'll go fly the plane. I have the plane jammed into this box here. The stabilization feature is on, which means that when we throttle up, it's going to try and keep our plane level. And you can actually probably see it if I start to move it around. So let's just, let's just yaw real quick and take a look at the rudder right there. You can, it's very, it's, it's a little hard to see. Um, and then the elevons, or the elevators, rather, should be a little bit easier. You can at least hear that it's trying to correct. And, and you'll notice the natural position of these things is that they're pretty centered. So when I throttle up here, it's going to just stay in place. Now take off. Well, that's interesting. Now I'm going to let it just stay on the ground and rest. This is gonna come back to center or roughly center position right here. Okay, so we will throttle up again here. And so the rudder is still straight, but after a certain vibration point, let's just see here, hold on. So I'm holding the plane straight. Even if I'm holding the plane right here, it's straight and level. And this harmonic oscillation has told our plane that we are rotating in, in crazy directions. Um, so that, that really, hold on. <laughs> that for obvious reasons works against us. So I've been having to fly this plane without any stabilization, which like, aha, boo hoo, you'll be fine. I'm no expert at plane flying, but um, now I have to just get a little bit better. Anyway, that's the update on the plane. If you mess with it, uh, if you mess with the bull, you get the horns or if you mess with the board that contains the three axis gyroscope, you get the harmonic oscillation, whichever phrase you prefer.
So the other thing that I have noticed, which does make a lot of sense if you think about it, is that when I get into trouble with this plane, when the start, when the rudder starts doing a hard over, or the elevators go hard up or hard down because of this gyroscopic issue, and I have the um, stabilization feature on, the thing that I've noticed, which again makes a lot of sense, is that I can just turn the throttle down, which changes the vibration frequency on the craft. Um, it'll either bring it up or down, probably just down so it vibrates at a lower frequency, and then that starts to play less with the gyros on board. Wow, that was bad. That was not great. But this is further confirmation that the gyroscopic, or rather the harmonic oscillation of the craft is the primary issue here. And that's the craft, like the craft's natural dynamics interacting with the sample rate on the gyroscopes. Wow, it's really doing quite poorly now. And then the last thing that is uh, pretty easy to understand is that once things start getting bad, they only get worse. If you can't pull out of that rudder hard over or aileron hard up, or, sorry, elevator hard up or down uh, within about, you know, one or two seconds, the, you know, because I think there's a bit of an averaging thing that happens on there too. Um, you don't, uh, you don't like eclipse the sample window for the averaging on the gyro which means you're pretty much screwed um, and your plane is just gonna wildly oscillate and hit the ground. I think the easiest thing to do would be to take that central board off of the copter or off of the plane um, and then just isolate it with some foam. So whatever frequency this craft is vibrating at uh, in flight because of the propeller, whatever frequency that's at, the foam will damp it out most likely. You know, you can study this stuff for years. I, I have not, but you can study this stuff for years and I kind of think it's a lot like audio engineering. You can understand all the, the equations, you can do all of the math, and most of it is still black magic. Well, the plane no longer wants to fly. I was going to do a great shot of this flying off, off into, the, uh, into the sky there, but I think we might be, I think we might be toast. Might be time for a new plane. If you fly RC stuff and you have recommendations, um, I spent $50 on this. I could just go up to a big plane, but that's a big investment and I just moved. So trying to not spend more than like $100 max if possible. Seems like something might be cooked here and uh, yeah, might be worth moving up. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. New stuff coming soon as always. And uh, I don't know. Thanks for the patience. I know things have been slow recently. So see y'all soon.